Carolina and you can do as far as updating trade status and didn't play just the same time table for Reeves? No, no, no update this morning. And the same thing with the injuries, trying to stay away from the updates at this point, and then we'll just do the availability report, but nothing, nothing update there. Uh, Dave Biddle, uh, 20, 24 7 Sports. Hi, Ryan. I'm going to ask you about your running game. Defenses are, of course, stacking the box against you guys, especially the last three weeks. Um, mm-hmm. Does something need to improve with the offensive line and the running backs, or is it kind of like we're doing as well as we can considering? No, no, no. I don't. I don't think that's the case. I think we all need to do better. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, going back and watching the film, you know, we, we gotta we gotta block better. We gotta run better. Um, you know, we gotta try to do a better job equating numbers. You know, all of the above because, um, you know, certainly in games where they know you're gonna run it, you have to come up with with answers. But, but, um, but just moving forward in general. You know, we know we can do a better job, and so uh, we'll get back to work this week and get after it. Third row left, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Ryan, I mean, obviously you guys played in bad weather last year at Michigan. You played in bad weather uh, on Saturday. Just, are there issues that you think are popping up that are consistent with playing cold weather that this team needs to get better at? I, I think last week was just um, one of the most unique things I've ever been around. You know, just in, I think someone said at one point there was an 80 mile an hour wind gust in the area. You know, like it was just very strange. So, um, you know, if, if we play in a game like that again, you know, I think we would probably maybe try to, you know, run the quarterback a little bit more, um, you know, a little bit earlier. But uh, that comes with risks as well. So, um, no, I mean, I think uh, there's, there's bad weather and then there's extreme weather. And I thought that was, you know, pretty extreme on Saturday. Uh, fourth row right, Spencer Holbrook, Letterman Row. Ryan, when you talk about the, the advantages and disadvantages of running CJ, is it just as simple as now that it's on film, it's something that the defenses have to account for? And is that just as simple as that, or do you want to see that a little more become a part of your offense? Well, I, I think CJ, um, you know, uh, embraced it, and you could see what he can do. Uh, and I think it it can be a weapon for us moving forward. So, um, you know, maybe we we found a little something there, but that has pluses and minuses as well. Um, but at the end of the day, our running back's got to run, and. Uh, you know, our line's got to block and tight end's got to block. Uh, receiver's got to be a part of it, you know, whether it's the perimeter run game with the bubbles and things like that or coming down to block safeties. I mean, there's everyone's got to be involved in this, and you know, we all just got to execute it better. Uh, second row left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. You always attribute things to some of the scheme, coaching, and personnel. Uh, and we've asked you about the other two pretty frequently here. Yep. On the offensive line, Obviously, you've had the same starting lineup the entire Have you guys thought about maybe switching some things up? And if guys like Josh Fire and Enoch Lamont, he showed you some things that maybe I, deserve a chance. I, I thought Josh, uh, when you came in, played well. Um, you know, having the sixth defense or uh, sixth offensive lineman in the game is is something that uh, we don't do a lot of. But when we've we've done it, it's it's been solid for us. And I think his play has been better. I think he's gotten better. I think he's, uh, you know, when you come back after that ACL, it takes a while to really not just be healthy, but to get to the level of play you were before. I think uh, he's getting to that point. I don't know if he's quite there yet, but he's, he's getting there and had some good snaps on Saturday. Uh, but we're always looking at that. I mean, if there's a better um, you know, guy or two that we can put on the field, we'll do that. Um, you know, Right now, we feel like we're playing the best five. Yeah, no, I mean, he's, he's out there practicing every day. Um, but, but right now, we feel like we're playing the best five. Coach, you obviously you you want to be you have talked about this in the past. You want to be perfect, uh, and, and but you look at the landscape of college football and what happened this past weekend. Uh, is it important not to lose sight though that it's important to win that these games? You know, I mean, even if it's an ugly win, it's still a win. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's. You play nine conference games, and, and then our, our tenth was Notre Dame, and so that's ten conference games, and you got to bring it every week. And um, you know, it's not like you, know, you can show up and just roll your helmets out there. It doesn't work that way. And when you have different situations, you know, you put yourself at risk, and that's something that we brought up all along. Uh, we know that that's the case, and so we have to just keep finding ways to win. And um, I, I think that's very important to recognize that um, if you keep winning, you're going to keep moving on. So, you know, style points or no style points, win. That being said, when you look at the film, are we playing really clean football in all areas? Are we, you know, getting better every week? Those are the things we're going to focus on. And uh, that's what we'll get back to work today. And uh, we'll have a meeting here at 2.30, identify the things we've got to get better at and have a good week of practice and go play Indiana. Uh, right behind it, Clay Hall, WSYX. How much are you uh, 
prepping for Michigan? How much have you done all along, and are you ramping up in some sense? I mean, it's what we say around here is we live it every day. You know, working at it every day of the year, and um, you know we have to focus on on beating Indiana this week. But um, but the way that we approach it is we're working on that game every day of the year. Right behind him, Adam King, WBNS. You've talked about toughness and physicality all off season, all you know, every week. Now with that game. Feel like your guys are where they need to be toughness wise? I think we've definitely shown it. I think you, you can see that our guys have played physical. Um, and, you know, that's that's something that we've taken a lot of pride in this year. You know, you can see what we've done this season. Um, but again, it's it's something that is, you can't just say, oh, you know, all of a sudden you're playing, you know, efficient football, you're playing tough football, you're playing clean football, you're doing this, you're doing that, and all of a sudden it's just going to happen again the next week. You just got to keep bringing it every week. And then at the end of the year, You'll look back on the body of work, and then you can start identifying the things you've done well. But I think that um, throughout the year, um, you know, I think if you've seen some of the teams we played and talked to the teams we played, you've 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 recognized how hard, how tough we played. And again, the the three things that we focused on is toughness, discipline, and skill. How do you coach toughness? How does like what goes into that in practice? Well, it's just a way of life. You know, it's the way that you wake up in the morning. It's the way you. Um, you know, meet, it's the way you practice, it's, it's everything, you know, and it's not just the physicality, it's the mental approach, it's uh, being able to bring it every day in practice, but part of it's physicality as well, you know, there's there's a lot to that. Uh, deep back row, Jeremy Birmingham, rival? Ryan, uh, obviously the, the last month of the recruiting cycle is always crazy, it seems like this year seems to be setting up for something even more chaotic around the country. Yep. Um, obviously knowing you can't speak to specific recruits, but what are you guys doing just as a staff to kind of prepare for what looks to be a pretty tumultuous uh, few weeks ahead? Well, we can keep winning because that, you know, plays into it big time. You know, I think that all the recruits want to see, you know, um, how well you're playing on Saturday and what you said in recruiting is actually happening. I think a big part of that is on defense. Some of the things that we've talked to recruits about on the defensive side, you know, they had to see it uh, with their own eyes. And I think that they're doing that. So, um, you know, we have our weekly calls and we touch in with touch base with guys. But, um, you know, a big part of this is finishing the season strong and making sure that, you know, they see where we're at as a program. Because as you project out, you know, in college football, you want to make sure that you're part of a program that's winning and that has a lot of stability. And, and that's something that we sell a lot. How much more of an onus does that put on you guys to make sure you recruit the players that fit what you are looking for culture-wise? No, oh, that's everything right now. Well, you know. I guess I could say more than ever, but I'm sure you know it's it's been like this for, for you know 30 years here. But you have to make sure that you're recruiting great people. I just, with the way that things have changed with the transfer portal, with with NIL, um, a culture fit is is critically important um, because not every day is going to be perfect, and you want to have guys that want to be Buckeyes for the right reasons, and they're going to work through adversity and tough times, and um, and so yeah, I mean that's a big part of the recruiting process. Ryan, regarding that toughness, the last two weeks, Penn State, Northwestern, is that testimony over theory right now? Yeah, I mean, when you look at the way that we played in, in that Penn State game in the fourth quarter, um, I mean, I just, I, I, you know, I can't say enough about the toughness of our team. And just, I guess it was, a, what, 28 to 3 at one point in the fourth quarter, winning games in the fourth quarter. And that's, to me, what, what it's all about. And, you know, I think the way that, our defensive line found a way to win that game, you know, just being physical up front, tackling, um, you know, holding them to seven points, finding a way on offense to score, and moving on. Um, and I think, again, that's that's something that we take a lot of pride in. It's got to continue to build as we go into November, you know, is that we want to have that as a badge of honor. Does that give you confidence moving forward, or how, how do you view it right now? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, I think our guys are very confident right now. Um, you know, there's not too many teams that are undefeated across the country and have won games in the fourth quarter like we have. You know, I think our guys believe that they can get the game into the fourth quarter and win the game in the fourth quarter. Um, you've seen, seen us do that in big games here. You know, I think probably, you know, in the Rose Bowl, you saw that that, that happened. You saw it in the Notre Dame game. You saw it in the Penn State game. And, and that's a big part of being tough is winning the game in the fourth quarter. Um, so, again, is everything perfect? No, it never is. It's a journey. It's a process. Um, you know, you're constantly challenging guys to get better in certain areas. Um, but but you're seeing a lot of great things out there. Right next door, Pat Murphy, 24-7 Sports. Ryan, you mentioned you know, if you 
did it again, you might run CJ a little bit more. But we saw Emeka carry the ball twice, obviously the touchdown. We've seen a few of those this year yep. for not just him. How much can you guys be creative in the run game if the traditional run game, for whatever reason, isn't working on that given day? Yeah, I mean that's that's where a lot of those big plays came from was was some of those uh, those type of plays. You know, when, when you when you go sideways, you run the risk of having negative plays. We had a couple that did happen that way, and when you're in a a game like that and you're you're second and 14 that's not a good place to be in with you know that that type of environment so I mean, we tried to stay on schedule um, and we, we did try to throw the ball too and you know, we felt like we wanted to at least try to, to throw the ball and, and you could see there was only a few types of throws that really worked um, even when the wind was at our back so uh, we pushed when the wind was at our back we were trying to play fast when the wind was in our face we were trying to slow down a little bit and uh, but yeah, I think you know those type of things when you get the ball to the perimeter created some big plays for us, um, and there was some other ones that didn't that I thought if we had executed them better could have been better plays. Four for left, uh, Reed from the Lantern. I want to ask a bit of a different football question about uniforms. Of course, teams across college football wear alternate uniforms in special occasions, marquee matchups, etc. Just want to get your take on uniforms. If you have any superstitions, things like that. Um, I, I mean, I like the traditional uniforms. Um, I love that part of college football. Um, I think that some of our players and recruits like to see a different style and a different uh, swag and look to the uniforms, and that's that's great. But um, I'm more of a traditionalist and, and love, um, you know, the, the look that's been um, in college football for a long time, certainly at Ohio State, you know, in, in, the, in the jerseys that we've worn. Um, but the, even just across the country and all the different uniforms over the years, it's just something about that that, that I like. Saying that you're evaluating everything as far as the run game as it pertains to the offensive line right now, are you satisfied with the execution that's there? Do you think schematically there needs to be some shifting? Just how are you parsing that right now? Yeah, um, looking at all those things, um, I think, I mean, you know our expectation here. Our expectation is to score every time we have the ball. So, yeah, I mean, if you're <clears throat> if you're looking at it like that, no, it's not good enough, and we need to be better. Um, and, you know, certainly the O-line is a big part of that, but the running backs are too, the tight ends. Um, the wide receivers, the quarterback, everyone's involved in the run game. So, um, <clears throat> and especially in a game like that where you know they're all down in there and everyone has to do their part to equate numbers. So, um, yeah, it's something we'll just we'll keep looking at and trying to make sure we have the right stuff in, and then and then holding you know everybody accountable to do their job. And that's that's coaches, players, everybody. Do the conditions and or Mayan's hand play into it all? How much you could use a running back screen game against? You know, I, I think when we start to identify all those things, it looks like, you know, well, we're making excuses. So we can't do that. I mean, the bottom line is we've got to go out there and run the football. And there's going to be, you know, conditions. There's going to be, you know, injuries, bumps and bruises. At the end of the day, you know, we've got to go out there and produce. And that's the bottom line. Uh, second row left. Steve Hellwagen, 24-7 sports. Yeah, Coach, uh, Indiana, I think they've only won one Big Ten game in two years now. One in 14, I think, over the two years. Just... Uh, you just played a team kind of a similar record, and, and they didn't quit. They didn't back down. Just uh, what do you expect out of this team coming in and, and know that they gave you guys a really tough game here two years ago? Yeah, um, and, and I thought Fitz did a great job and his staff did a great job getting everybody going last week. A lot of respect for him and his staff. But same thing with Tom Allen. You, I mean, you guys know how um, you know much of a competitor he is and certainly has his hands all over the defense. Um, so they're, same thing. They're going to come in here and fight and play really, really hard. They always have. Um, it's a program with a lot of pride. He has a lot of pride. So, um, you know, we got it's a noon kick, you know, and we got to come out and, and play a little better early on in the game. I think that's that's going to be important, and that'll be a focus this week. I just, uh, to what you just said, starting fast, mm -hmm. three weeks in a row now, the other team maybe won the first quarter one way or the other. I don't know the points and all that, but uh, just getting off to a better start, just how, what can you do? Yeah, no, I mean, you look at <clears throat> the Iowa and the Penn State game, um, I felt like we created some turnovers on it. I think we actually won those first quarters maybe, you know, but we, we could have jumped on them early. And I think everyone feels that. Yeah, I feel the same way. So let's get in a rhythm early on and get going. And, um, you know, noon start, wake up fast and, and, you know, get to clicking some pads. Uh, front row right, Austin Ward, Rivals, 97.1 The Fan. You know what I mean? I try to organize a lot of thoughts that I have here about the defensive line rotation. It seemed like that going into Big Ten play in Wisconsin, you felt like it'd be better to pare that down. I know that Larry's long-term philosophy is to rotate and has always mm -hmm. done that. Mm -hmm. He said he wants fresh guys in the fourth quarter. And I'm, unless I'm mistaken, JT played 11 snaps out of 23 and Zach played 12 in the fourth quarter. I just, when you look at it, what are the conversations like? Are you 
concerned about how it's going? Like, what's the rationale behind maybe what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think it's a good question. I, I think um, you know the first thing is <clears throat> we have a deep D line, so I think, I think that's the first thing. And um, like you said, the goal is to be fresh and um, certainly at the end of games, but you know at the end of the season as well. I, I think for those guys, um, I think we were maybe in the, in the um, you know like seventies or, or late seventies, maybe eighty plays, something like that in the game. And, and I think most of those guys were into the mid to high fifties, so you know almost. 80% of the snaps they were in there for, which is, you know, in a day like that, it's pretty good. I think some of it plays into the personnel groupings. We do change some personnel groupings with Jim. Um, you know, there's there's sub, there's big, there's sack, there's a lot of different things that come out there. So, um, you know, he's going to rotate those guys. And I, I think the overall number was good. Um, you know, maybe maybe one of those guys got in a rotation, you know, in the fourth quarter there. Um, but. But overall, you know, if they're on there for you know eighty to eighty-five percent of the game in a big game like that, I think those are pretty good numbers and keeps guys healthy in a in a heavy running game like that. For Mike Hall specifically, was that a product of Northwestern's heavy packages? Was is there still a pitch count for him? What, what was his workload? How was that managed? I, I think you get the right idea there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's it's all the above. Yeah. Brian, I uh, talked about the running game quite a bit. I'm going to ask specifically about the third and ones and fourth and one where you. Yeah. I understand if, if they've got nine guys in the box, you're right. not going to break eight yard runs. But to be able to get, not be able to get one or two, yeah. when you dissect that, what did you see? Yeah, I think that's a great point because of all of the things that I was disappointed with on Saturday running the football, short yardage was the one that was high on the list. Um, I mean, you know they're all going to be in there, and, and, and we've got to convert in those situations. Um, I, I think. Um, it was a combination of things. Um, you know, there was a, there was a, there was multiple ones. You know, that that hurt us on third down. Um, but we didn't we didn't quite get the movement we wanted to, and um, you know we didn't quite you know enter the blocks the right way. Um, you know, there, you'll see a couple of them where we just were not flush on the blocks. And then there's one scheme that we probably could have done a better job with in terms of uh, doing that. But um, but overall, it was just you know they they were down in there and we weren't getting enough movement. You know, we gotta we gotta get our pads down lower. We gotta fit those blocks a little bit better, and then you know there's a couple times we can get them in better plays. So I think, it's, again, it's not just one person you know that that made um, you know the mistake because there was multiple ones we didn't convert on. How much was maybe the running back was only my end? You know, on one play it looked like he could have cut back. Did he do what he was supposed to do, or on all of them? You know, I mean, I'm not gonna give him a 100% grade, no. But um, I can't just sit here and say it was his fault either. You know, I mean, it's it's a little bit of everybody and. You know, that's not a good sign, you know, is when it's kind of one guy here and one guy there. Um, but that's what happened. Second row right, Doug Maurice, Cleveland.com. Uh, Ryan, there's only, you know, one football, and you guys have a lot of options in the past game. You've thrown it to receivers. You're using the tight end a lot this year. But just to follow up on the screen game with the running backs, I think the backs had 41 catches in 13 games last year. They have nine in nine games this year. Trey had 27 catches last year. Is there something in the way that defenses are playing you? I mean, usually that running back screen game is taking advantage of right their pass rush, and then you hit them like that. Maybe that that kind of play doesn't make as much sense this year. The way defenses are, are scheming you guys. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I, I think it's a good point. I don't, I don't know if um, you know. I, I don't think it's it's a schematic thing. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, we we've tried to throw a couple screens to those guys. Didn't quite work out. We're still working at that to make sure that that's a weapon for us, and that's. Usually been good, um, and we'll keep working at it. You know, um, I think a little bit of it too is just you know, those guys have kind of been in and out a little bit this year. So I don't know if we've got the the rhythm and the chemistry that we wanted there. Um, and so hopefully we can get all, you know all these guys rolling here as, as we head into these last few games. And then just overall, the, the whole thing with your offense, you have to win each Saturday. Of course, if you don't win each Saturday, then you don't get to where you want to go. But when you think of like big picture offense in the off season. The last, if you guys are going to win a national title, the last three games that you're going to play are going to be indoors in Indianapolis and two warm weather or indoor games in the playoffs. But the first 12 are here. Right. Does that require two types of thinking about offense, two types of preparation about offense? That, of course, we know Saturday, Saturday, but big picture, it is two different things, is it not? Yeah, I totally agree, and, and I think it's very perceptive, and it's something that I thought a lot about in the off season. I think that's. Why you know you see us in some of the under center stuff in the different groupings, um, 
I mean, there was a point in that game last week where I was nervous that the snap was going to go over the, the quarterback's head, you know, so we were under center a lot more. Uh, <clears throat> but that's, like you said, that's playing in the Big Ten in November. So, um, you know, again, that was a little bit of extreme, but we've tried to make some adaptions so that, or adaptations to make sure that we're ready for those type of uh, environments because then you turn around and then you're in Indy and it's wide open and, and it's, you know, 72 degrees in, on a fast track. So, yeah, you have to have both of those things in order to get to where you want in terms of reaching your goals. Absolutely. Remember we're right. Tim May, Letterman Row, on three. Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of dovetailing off what Doug just asked you, but it's what I wanted to ask you all along. Mm -hmm. And you're standing on the sideline. You know, you go into that game, you know what the weather report is, the weather forecast is, but I would think you kind of, like, don't believe that it can take away everything, right? And I would think there's, like, Two little guys in your head, one screaming, get in the eye formation, two tights, run the ball down their throat. The other is, but wait a minute, what about this other stuff we worked on? The conversations. Ex explain what you go through in, a, in that of just saying, no, nah, we just got to line up and run the ball down these guys' throats. What, was it a little bit of like that? Yeah, you might have my, my head bugged, I think, in that game. That's, that's, exactly, <laughs> that's, about, that's about exactly what it was. Um, yeah, and that was the conversation during the week. You know, you looked at the – you look at your phone and you're like, okay, 30 mile an hour wins, 40 mile an hour wins. Ah, it'll be all right. We'll be good. We'll figure it out. You know, like we always do. Well, what if it isn't? So I went back, watched um, the Patriots play the Bills uh, in the Win Bowl. Uh, went back, watched, and tried to find all the win games from the last couple of years in the NFL. Watched the Browns um, play the Raiders in 2020 up there. And it was like 30 mile an hour wins. And just tried to figure out, okay, if this happens like this, like what do we do? Um, didn't have a lot of answers <laughs> because <laughs> there wasn't a lot going on in those games. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think you try to um, – you have to – it's a real thing, but at the same time you tell our guys, well, we got to go win the game. We just have to play. And if you make it a bigger game, a bigger thing, then um, it becomes more of a distraction. Um, you know, I thought warming up, we were throwing and, and catching. I saw one of the punts from the other team actually go straight in the air and land on our side of the line of scrimmage, which – um, I asked the referee if the ball is punted and it lands on our side of the ball, uh, side of the line of scrimmage, is it live? Can we pick it up? And he says, no, if it crosses the line of scrimmage then and comes back, it's not. And then his buddy says, no, no, it is live. So <laughs> they had to have a little discussion. And so I had to tell the team if that ever happened, like you pick it up and score, you know? So like it was just, it was kind of one of those days. But um, to answer your question, yeah, there's, there's a part of we just got to go do what we do because we have a really good game plan about what they do. But then all of a sudden you have to have this package over here that we kind of put together late in the week to say if it gets really extreme and you literally can't throw a forward pass, what do you get to? And um, and that's, you know, so the, the, the call sheet was like, you know. Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to ask you. Is running the ball uh, in those kind of conditions, but running the ball, period, it, there's a lot of attitude involved there, isn't there? As that's much right. as there is scheme. You got it. And do you, do you think your team has fallen a little bit short in that attitude aspect up till now, third and one, third and one. You, you, got, you got to get the first down. There's no, there's no excuse for not getting the first down. So there can be 50, 50 guys in a box. You got to go get it. You know, you got to, you got to get movement and the extra guy, you got to run them over. You got to crack block them, get it to the corner and, and convert. That's the bottom line. So yeah, if we're not converting, then yeah, we're coming up short. And final question, second row right, Bill Landis, Ryan. Right. Um, Again, as you said, not, not trying to pin anything on, on just one guy, but is, is there anything with Matthew Jones's foot that is hindering him from down to down and, and maybe giving him some trouble at times? I mean, he's he's um, like a lot of our guys. You know, there's a lot of things that um, this time of year guys are fighting through, and he's a tough player. And, um, you know, he, we think he gives us our best chance to to go be successful. But, um, but, yeah, I mean, he's like a lot of our guys that have these bumps and bruises right now that he's fighting through. And... Um, so yeah, I mean it's that time of year, I guess. At that position specific, or I guess offensive line in general, when you have a guy, I mean, it's not like a I don't know a receiver you can limit his snaps if you wanted to. Like that, you need those guys to be cohesive and gel together. Does that make it more difficult when you're trying to balance? Like, can I steal this guy some rest somewhere? Um, no, I think it's a good point. I mean, I, I think you can do that in the O line. Yeah, I think you can you can spell some guys if 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 we think that you know he needs that you know, and that's something that usually we decide before the game like get the you know, injury report, talk to the guy, you know, do we think that we need to, you know, put him on a pitch count? If we do, then we then we can do that. And I think with the, with the O-line, if it's just one guy, it's not uh, the end of the world. But again, we try to make those decisions going into the game, and we feel like based on what we see in practice every day that, 
you know, those five are our best five. Thank you very much. All right, guys. Thanks. Thank